Hello, welcome back to the garden. Over the last couple of weeks, myself and my friend Kath have coppiced this beautiful hazel tree and we spent quite a lot of time processing the materials from it. And in today's video, I can't wait to show you how much this one tree has provided me with. Before we get any further into the video, I want to give you a brief definition of what coppicing is because um, I'd grown up hearing about coppicing and I'd heard about pollarding, didn't know the difference. And it wasn't until I moved here that I kind of fully looked into it and started to understand it. And I'm going to talk to you about coppicing next to probably one of the best examples of a coppiced hazel tree in my woodland garden. I absolutely love this tree. And um, it really kind of shows the benefits of coppicing a tree. So with a coppice tree, rather than allowing it to grow as one tree trunk, grow really tall and big and take up a lot of space, what you do is you cut the trunk right at the base, okay? Then that will promote vigorous growth and the tree will, in its defense, send out loads of shoots, okay? So on this tree here, I did do a really quick count and I think I've got around about 30 of these smaller um, shoots here and six of these much bigger trunks. That means that rather than having one really, really big tree, I can have loads of tree trunks growing out of that one area and it also makes them much more manageable. So archaeologists have actually found evidence of coppices dating back all the way to Neolithic times. And I'm no archaeologist myself, but I'm pretty sure they did not have chainsaws like we have today. So only relying with hand tools, coppicing trees would have made it much easier for them to manage their um, trees for timber and for fuel and whatever else they use the trees for because as I said I'm not an archaeologist um, and then that takes us on to what is pollarding basically pollarding is exactly the same as coppicing but rather than cutting the tree down at the base you actually cut the tree much higher and that is to stop grazing animals coming along and eating those shoots because obviously if you had them eating shoots you then wouldn't get this amazing timber harvest in a few years so before i show you the amazing amount of resources that that one hazel tree has provided me with i thought i'd really quickly show you what a one year old coppice tree looks like um, i've got quite a few examples here and they are completely accidental they were trees that were growing here about a year ago this whole area was covered in brambles and there were lots of really thin gnarly trees that had kind of grown twisted around all of those um, brambles. So when we cut the brambles down and I had um, some tree surgeons doing a little bit of um, management in my woodland there, they really kindly came along and just kind of sawed off all of the saplings or chainsawed off all of the saplings and fast forward a year later I've done absolutely nothing here and I have some really amazing examples. What I really love about this as well is I don't how many have we got here actually let's have a look um, we've got one two three four five six seven we've got about eight I think seven or eight here these are actually growing in a really nice area. I love how they have all got space to grow. So I'm gonna be keeping these here. If you have a look at the base of all of these, you can see the one trunk that got cut and the amount of um, sprouts and shoots that are coming out. So I can't wait to see how these um, do. So when we were over there a moment ago, I did forget to mention actually that coppicing is done on a rotation. So as you can see, we've got quite a lot of trees close together here. So what I could do is wait seven years. These will all be seven years old and then cut one tree. That then cutting that to the ground will allow more light to get to these two trees. So they will have a really good growing season. And then the next year, cut this one down, cut the one behind so that all the time I have different ages of trees. So I'm providing light to the ground in certain areas. So certain plants on the forest floor can flourish, but then I'm also providing trees for birds and things and insects and beneficial animals that we do need will have a home as well. So it's so amazing how you can just really work with nature and coppice trees. But anyway, enough of me going on, let's go down and have a look at what this lovely tree that I coppiced is gonna provide me with. The first thing that this tree has provided me with is light. I've got my polytunnel behind me here. The sun actually rises behind you over there. There are a few trees that still do need to be worked on behind to allow more light coming in in the morning, but we're about 11.30 now. Um, 
and we've got the sun over here. So by having this cut down, it has provided much more light to my polytunnel first thing in the morning. And the next thing that this tree's provided me with is wood chip and so much. Honestly, I can't believe it. These are 30 litres each. So with that in mind, I estimate that I've got 120 litres of wood chip here. And for me, I just use it for pathways um, in the polytunnel and for using it as a mulch on my bed to help retain moisture and just cover um, the ground so we don't get weeds and stuff like that growing. Um, but also you can add it to your compost heap and having it um, chopped up like this will make it rot down much quicker. The best thing about this wood chip though is because I practice no dig, that means that this is um, all carbon that the tree managed to pull out from the air and I'm gonna be putting it down on the ground. I'm not gonna be digging it, so it's just gonna kind of be locked in the ground forever more, and all of that carbon isn't being released back into the environment. One thing that I did forget to mention when I showed you the wood chip was that with the tree, when we um, cut it down, we actually processed it. So the scraggly thinner bits went into wood chip, the thinner bits went here, which are going to provide me with lovely um, kindling for my log burners. We've got two log burners at home, and they don't actually provide our main source of heating in the house. We've got gas central heating, but um, the log burners do definitely supplement the heating in the autumn and the winter. In the autumn, we probably have maybe one fire a week, just at a weekend, and um, then in the winter, we probably, depending on how much wood we've actually got in the storage that we've processed, we probably have maybe three a week um, because our house gets honestly absolutely freezing. So the longer, thinner bits that couldn't go into the um, wood chipper provided us with some lovely kindling. Now, um, it was quite long and straight, so I probably could have kept back, some back for um, using them as canes and stuff for the garden, for growing, um, squash up making trellises but at the moment i'm not really too focused on that this year because i've got a lot of bamboo canes left over so this will provide me with some kindling for the fire here's the timber that the tree has provided we with as you can see there is a really lovely big fat log here all of this will be firewood i've got a little mound over there that i've also cut um to go alongside with this, but I've got a lot of cutting to do. One thing about coppicing that I really love is that you don't really let them get much bigger than this. And when we actually cut the um, tree down, we use hand saws, we didn't use chainsaws, and anything bigger than this is just gonna be too hard to manage. I do have three chainsaws actually, um, a battery operated one, a plug-in one, and a um, petrol powered one, all of which I, I'm not really confident with using and um, they do need some maintenance on. So at the moment, I'm not too worried about that. I'm just gonna use a lovely bow saw. So it's definitely gonna take me quite a while to get through and process all of this wood. But the one good thing about hazel is it does actually season really quickly. So if I cut it up now um, and put it into my storage, then if I run out and need this firewood for next autumn or for this coming autumn, it probably will be okay. So one of the most important and exciting things this tree has provided me with is cuttings to make new hazel trees. I'm not sure how many we've got here, um, but when we were cutting up the stuff for kindling we kept a load back so we could put it into a nursery bed and grow them and then plant them into their final growing places in my woodland garden so let's go and put these in the nursery bed now so the nursery bed that I'm going to be using for these hazel cuttings is just outside my polytunnel and I usually use it for my potatoes and they're not going to be going in for another um, six to eight weeks. So this is the perfect place that I can put them in and I should know within six to eight weeks whether um, the cutting has taken and then I can really easily pull it out and then put it into its final growing position. The main thing you need to think about when doing this is just putting them the right way up. If you put them in upside down, I do think they still grow, but just to be on the safe side, if you put them the right way up, it will give them a bit of a head chance. Sometimes it is actually hard to work out which way they need to go. Uh, but with these ones, it's pretty easy because I've left the little branches on. So I know I'm getting those the right way up. Just in case you're worried as well, it really doesn't matter that they're going in this close together because not all of them will root but if they all did root they're going to be really easy to pull out and take apart at this early stage so the fact that you know 
more than half of them might fail, it's worth just putting in as many as you can. <laughs> There's like a whole tree there. How many have we actually got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. think we've got at least 30 so pretty pleased with that there's probably quite a few of you that have been shouting at the screen as we've gone along through this video telling me that there is other things that I can use that beautiful hazel wood for especially instead of using it as firewood I understand that burning wood is not good you know it's giving off carbon dioxide that that tree amazingly kind of captured for us um, but we use gas at the moment. We did look, when we first moved here actually, we did look at getting um, ground source heat pumps and things um, that were environmentally friendly to heat our home. But everyone that came out pretty much said that the systems that they could provide us with would not be suitable for our house. And also you needed an upfront payment of about 30,000 pounds. And at the time we didn't have it and we still don't have it. You do, um, back then you did actually get grants and you did get the money back over kind of seven years, but you still needed that upfront money to begin with and um, which we didn't have so when I burn that wood you know I'm not burning gas which we would be using instead so I know it's not great you know it's releasing particulates into the air which again is not good. Um, but also when we have um, had the, you know, tree surgeons in doing stuff, I did actually, we had this cherry tree, sorry, I'm, I'm going like on a little side shoot here, but we had this cherry tree that um, someone said, you know, find someone that can use that wood. They can make furniture with it. Uh, the cherry wood is a really, really good resource and amazing. I did kind of reach out to a couple of different places and ask them if they wanted the tree. Nobody was interested. Where we are, we, we can't get access behind and we've got 60 steps um, going down to the road where a you know a lorry or trailer would come. The access to the actual, the road access isn't great either. So it is really annoying. When I did my first video talking about all of the timber that we had up there that I would use for firewood, I had two people contact me and say, you know, uh, they possibly wanted it for woodworking. Um, then I gave them more details about the wood and showed them pictures and they said no they didn't want it either. So it is hard to think that we are just burning that but I do want to actually process loads of it for wood chip. That's probably the best thing that I can be using the wood for and that is kind of locking the carbon in and keeping it on my site so that's really what I'm looking to do this for also with all of these hazel cuttings there are about 30 there I'm sure half of them won't take but I am hoping to actually replace some of the bigger trees in my garden with these um trees that I can coppice but also as well as having hazel I would like to coppice oak and I would also like to coppice ash now um, again you're probably thinking why are you cutting down big trees and um, they're so important but actually the trees in my garden some of them on the boundary they've got ash dieback they're absolutely huge and they're so gnarly and old they're bordering on kind of becoming dangerous and with the um when we had the tree surgeons out before, that actually cost me £2,000, okay? £2,000 to have three men here for four days, okay? Going forward, if I can create trees in my garden like this, I don't need to spend that kind of money on keeping my woodland safe and beautiful. And those trees, okay, they do look really ugly, whereas this, I'm sorry, looks absolutely beautiful. So um, there you go. Sorry, I've just gone on really too long with this video as ever. So I'm really sorry, but I really hope you've enjoyed watching today. And if you would, I was just thinking this earlier, would you like me to take you on a walkthrough through my woodland? I don't think I've ever done it before, but I would love to show you every single kind of nook and cranny in this woodland area, because also you will be able to give me, um, I'm sure, some brilliant ideas of how I can utilize the area. But anyway, if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, please, 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 please hit that subscribe button, ring the bell so you're notified of all of my latest videos. And as ever, YouTube have some videos up on the screen now that they think you'll like. So please go ahead and watch those and I'll catch up with you in the next episode. Bye.